called it. It's my favorite because I think you could just like step outside and be like, my hair is this today. And you know, you could like, you own it. It's, yeah. It's cool. Like mine looks like it's that way, but I just took out a braid. So it um, looks I beautiful. Used, I used to have curly hair and then, you know, kids and all that hormones. And they say women's hair changes like seven times in their lifetime. So, yeah. um, which makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> my son's like, you would look great with curly hair. I'm like, I know I, I would. Thank you. But I'm happy because you can just, well, you can braid it. And, but I'm rocking my like eighties to nineties inner child today. Um, That's what we need. Yeah. So, um, welcome Angie. Um, Angie the Rose on Instagram. And that's how we connected. Um, because I really love all of your your videos and and what you do and how you share them and I would say that's that's your superpower. Yeah, I mean the whole entire process of documenting I know a lot of people like scoff at it but to me it's just another art form because you know in the past people kept diaries about their process and everything and now we're living in a technology driven society so why not document it through video? And I just find joy in like looking back at that time when like when I'm creating a painting like this, like it is so layered and dimensional that when I'm in the trenches of it, I forget how amazing it is to like go back and watch it and like, oh, I did that. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> That's such a really great way of looking at it. And it's true. I love going back and seeing like, Ooh, that was powerful. Like, you know, why am I doubting myself or or whatever? Like, how amazing was that moment in time? And yeah. and you know what how amazing it was beyond the video documentation, but it is Instagram is like a diary or anything, anything, TikTok or whatever you're doing or wherever you're pouring your soul. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm into, right? Yeah. Um, so when did you uh really so, oh, actually, I want to go back to the beginning. So you, did you didn't, did you go to school or you like discovered um, your creativity and stuff? Like, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So, I mean, I know every artist says this, but ever since I was a kid, I knew I was going to be a painter. And it wasn't until I saw a Vincent Van Gogh painting. I was like, someone, a human hand created that. Like somehow they pulled this image from their mind. They picked these colors, they picked the style just intuitively. And I was like, that's the type of like mental and physical life path that I want to go on. And ever since then, I've just been so enamored with creativity in general. My grandmother, who was a um, war survivor from Poland, she used to draw ads for magazines of just like people's porches and things. So I feel like genetically I inherited a lot of creativity from my maternal side of the family and when I went off to college like of course I was in the mindset of like I need to get a degree that I can pay my bills with because I have student loans and it wasn't until I tried to take a statistics class I went to my parents and I was like I don't know what to tell y'all but I need to be an art major because I'm sucking at this right this is in torture <laughs> yes. And they're like, okay, you can get your BFA, but it has to be in graphic design. So even though I was in the fine arts program, I was learning like more like corporate type artwork, but I was still able to take like the studio classes that were able to like tickle my brain a little bit. Hmm. So I've always been drawn to creativity. Like even when I worked my web developer job, I had a tell myself every day this is just a different art form web development is like digital painting <laughs> and it just got to the point where my vision was getting so fucked up i was just like you know what maybe i need to be a painter because i i want to be able to see in my old age <laughs> yeah yeah and and taking care of yourself and i i think it's such a great outlet of course if you abuse it you can get burnt out in anything that you're doing but um yeah like those i've been in those jobs 
for sure. Like it is, it is hard. And, and you realize later that it's just like the building block to the foundation of where you're meant, what you're building, where you're going. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you build it up and you get to see how it was important later. But um, yeah. Do you want to talk about how that was important, an important step to um, your studio practice? Uh, yeah. So like with my studio practice, I, uh, I'm of the mindset, like, this is not the healthiest thing. Maybe this is where we're in America, but I was like, you know what, I'm just going to turn out painting after painting until I find that voice that speaks to who I am intuitively. And for a solid couple of years, I could turn out like a painting a week and they were complex, very layered, colorful paintings. And it brought me to what this is now. But um, yeah, with my studio practice, I'm starting to learn with age, like it's better, like I needed that youthful energy, that phonetic energy to get to this slow movement practice where now I take my time with my works. So, like instead of rushing something like this, this will probably take me like two to three months to make. Mm -hmm. right and before i was just like i need to feed the beast and now it's like i need to feed myself like spiritually creatively and if no one else likes it at least i like it that's all that matters <laughs> totally um yes no like i yeah turning stuff out is it, it there's a lesson in that for sure mm -hmm. um Sorry, I'm getting, hold on, I just want to pause. I'm getting feedback. I don't know why. Can you hear it? I, uh, I don't hear anything. I hear the feedback when I talk. Oh. Yeah, after. I'm not getting it. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't show up in the court work today. Oops. I don't know why I'm getting feedback, but... Yeah, there's no, nothing hooked up. I, I used to have like a whole setup and then I was like, you know, I uh, don't want to set this up every time I pop down to the basement and it's not that much nicer than what I, than this. <laughs> why am I wasting my time? Um, okay, let's, yeah. Okay, hopefully it, it doesn't, but last time I did this, it did, I did hear it. Or Do you want to restart the video call and see if that helps? Yeah. Let's okay. I don't think it will because I also tried that the last time. <laughs> but hey, we'll try. We'll okay. try. I messed up. I put it down. I was like, I'm not gonna fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> there, I'm not getting it. Oh, good. Yay. Yeah. I used to also be in like IT support. So like anytime someone had an issue, I was just like, restart your machine. Just step one. Always. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So you were, so you also worked in tech support. Mm hmm. Oh, briefly, like, I think it was just like, they needed to give me something to do before they fully brought me on board. And I was like, I can help people. Yeah. And I did it for a month. And I was like, that was nice. I'm glad I don't have to talk to anyone after this. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, my gosh, that I would be so bad at that. Well, it's funny, because it's like, you know, I mean, we go throughout life wearing different masks. And it's just like, I'll be that happy chipper person for you within the span of like 10 minutes. But after that, I need to like go for a walk or something. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm, I, I appear so nice, but really like this morning I was just like cursing like a sailor. <laughs> like I'm actually like a little bit not nice. sometimes. I mean, that's just being human. And yeah. I fully embrace, like, I tell everyone, I joke, I'm just like a rabid possum within like a human meat suit most days, just because it's like, I don't understand why you're being mean right now, because 
I can be a mean back, but I'm choosing not to be. So be thankful. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I manners are a huge thing. Like for me, like not like manners, like formal manners, but like appreciation and gratitude and and just being kind out of the goodness of your heart. And even if you don't feel like it, just like, you know, be nice. It's not yeah. that hard. Not hard. Yeah. And that's actually an unspoken rule that I have on social media. Like if I see like a nasty comment, like the world's so messed up right now. I don't have the time for that negativity. So that comment's going to be deleted especially if I look at your profile and you just seem to be a heinous person anyways. I'm just like, you don't get the right to look at my artwork and experience this joy if you're just going to be mean. Mm. Like, I don't understand that. It's like, it's not hard to be nice. I don't know. Maybe it's, I think back to like where I'm so intrigued by science. I think about maybe that person has like heavy metals in their system because that alters personalities. Like, it just makes people meaner. Like, that's scientifically proven. Like, that's why a whole generation of people that was exposed to, like, lead and aluminum, they're just essentially bastards. Because, like, the chemicals. Yeah, it's weird. That's why, like, I live in an old house, right? I started peeling the walls. And I was like, there might be lead paint in here because you have to think about exposure. That's why children shouldn't eat chipped paint because it alters like the brain chemistry. I know it sounds super weird, but it's just like heavy metal poisoning. It just alters personalities. Too much heavy metal. Yes. Not the music, just the <laughs> elements. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a fun, fun fact fun scientific fact those don't get dropped often in this color we have the <laughs> podcast hypochondria <laughs> avoid heavy metals um okay so i i want to talk about how how social media has played a role in this in the you know because people are like does it work does it does instagram help i'm like Yes, it does. Want to know why? Because every opportunity I have leads back to Instagram. Um, every Everything I'm doing right now, it leads back to that. That's how I've created connection. That's how I've gotten my jobs. That's how I, it's like an online portfolio of what you offer and your skill sets and your strengths. And it's so integral to have a presence somewhere um now like it's just it's you have to absolutely how has it played a role in your practice um it's helped me immensely and i think like not only sharing my practice but my authentic self because i think it's so easy with social media not to be who you truly are and if you show that authentic authenticity people are going to witness it and they're going to be attracted to it. And it just also helps with reputation. Just, um, I've gotten so many jobs. I just sold a bunch of works to be in a show in November and I got paid up front for it because not only do I have like this mass following, but like they saw who I was as a person. They were like, I want to do business with this person. Mm. So I think it's, it's kind of like, it's a visual resume. Basically, whatever you put out into the world, people are going to witness it. So it's like the effort you put in, that's what you're going to get back. That's my perspective. Yeah. And sure. uh, even on TikTok, like when I quit my full time job, it was because I got such a following of people who were interested in these little framed paintings. And it replaced my income that I was making with my job and I was just like this is exactly what I needed and it was right when the pandemic hit and I was just like this was just meant to be I don't like that we're in a pandemic <clears throat> right now but um I, I'm just gonna ride this wave and see where it takes me mm -hmm. yeah it like definitely people who understood how TikTok worked right away I remember it took me like four hours to figure out how to make a video I was like this is oh yeah oh. And it's so, so different from when it first came out, because at first it was all lip syncing. And 
I don't know about you, but like I I can't watch myself lip syncing something because my face it's so full of expressions. And I'm like, we're just gonna do like vignette shots of my profile painting. I'm not gonna lip sync anything. Yeah. But I'm gonna somehow like hook people in by watching my tiny little paintbrush filling in a little white space and magic. It worked. Mm -hmm. I really liked what you said about authenticity. Um, so what does that mean? What does that mean to the people listening? It means that you get to be whatever weird self you are. Like if you really love, like take a Katerina Popova, for example, like she loves magic and she loves, we talked about like Harry Potter and all those, like what, what things do you love? What makes you kind of weird? And I actually told my sister how important reels were for her business. Like months and months ago, I was like, you have to do them. Like you have to do them. Um, and she's a little bit stubborn. Like no surprise. The women in our family are like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, um, so finally she like, it something clicked and, mm -hmm now it's just like she's like I can't stop it's not that I love it but mm -hmm. like her authentic self is shining through like she's funny she likes weird stuff she's doing reels all about gravy this weekend because it's Thanksgiving here in Canada so she's doing gravy themed I love that yeah, not you. You love gravy. You always like we would go places and she'd like eat like six poutines a day at different spots. Like she loves gravy. So like she's taking like the friends episodes and like making them into reels. Like when when Joey eats the the um trifle or whatever, he's like mm -hmm. good. Like she's making funny and like I love it. And I'm sure others love it too. And like, she's, by the way, she owns a yoga practice. So <laughs> Gravy and yoga. Yeah. I never knew that they could come together. It's, like, it's a balance you get to indulge, but you can take care of yourself. It's like life. Life is messy, but here's a safe space for you. I, I, I'm embracing the fact that I love gravy and I'm also a huge yogi and practice self-care like there's it's just oh it's fun if you just decide to make it fun right? absolutely yeah and like it, for anyone who's like still on the fence about it here's my tips get a tripod that adjusts storyboard your reels i know it sounds tedious but just like even if you write a word of like the different shots you want to take you're going to start enjoying that process especially if you're more creatively leaning or even like an analytical person would love it it's just like approaching it in a way where it's like you know what maybe i'm kind of indifferent to this right now but once you start getting into that process of like expressing yourself to others it's kind of like like friendship dating or romantic dating you're letting people know you and there's a magic to that and there's connections that can happen from that the day that instagram died i was like my like i've made so many great mostly female friends uh and i'm like my friends i'm not sure how to find them anymore <laughs> Like, yeah, right. Like some, I didn't have emails and they live across the world. I actually got to meet one in New York recently. Um, it, it is, a, it is a real community. There's, there's something about, yeah, being vulnerable and finding those people who you, you genuinely connect with and, and then the support, everyone supports one another. Um, and the great thing about if you treat it in a positive, fun way, the algorithm, it works with you. It works yes. with you and feeds you the people you want to be surrounded by and the community that you need. And um, so the algorithm actually, that might be this, but the algorithm is your friend. That might be what this is called. Absolutely. Your friend. Um, and 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 we can look at this positively because it is a positive positive thing and it's a tool and a resource for you that we should be really really grateful for 
Um, do you want to talk about some of the opportunities? Um, I know you talked lightly about what uh, is happening, but some of the opportunities that happen because of uh, social media. Uh, so one thing is I'm represented by the gallery Liz Liggett in um, Iowa. Um, that all happened thanks to Instagram, really. And even like just getting interviews like this right here where I'm able to spread the word about my art practice. I was in, um, what's that magazine? Oh gosh, I hate that I'm blanking on it. It's a Canadian based magazine and I was in it. I was on the cover. Oh no, no. Okay, brain fart. I'm sorry, but no, I'm Canadian. <laughs> it's that creative magazine. Oh my God. I know it's in my closet. Can I go get it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Can't find it. Okay. <laughs> It's Canadian though, and it was worldwide. And my friend in Germany was like, I saw your artwork on a cover magazine. And I was like, I know. And it was the 50th edition, and I really hate that I forgot it. Oh my You'll God. You'll think of it. It'll come to you while we I talk. Hope so. I hope so. But um, even like locally, I've been in an article for uh, my local city magazine where like now my neighbors get to see that, oh, there's an artist living in Fisher Park. Maybe I should knock on her door and give her a pie for a painting. I don't know. <laughs> but um, one could it, only hope that that's what will happen to you. I love pie. Give me pie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it just has like where I'm such like naturally, it doesn't seem like it right now, but I'm naturally very introverted. Like I really have to feel out people before I can show this exuberance. And um, being allowed to like have this outlet with social media has like helped me come out of my shell more and lead me to these opportunities where I'm making more connections, which is really nice. Um, one of my friends runs a podcast, po ugh, my mouth. I don't talk very much during the day. He runs a podcast called Free Pizza based here in Greensboro. And that was like my first experience getting recognized locally and like I got so many sales from that. Like after it was published, I was like, dang, this is amazing. God bless social media. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, there's always a balance with social media. I, I just have to view it as a creative outlet and not a burden because it's helped me achieve the dreams that I've wanted for myself. And there's still more dreams that I want. And I'm gonna try my damnedest to get them. Yeah, for sure. Look at us, I'm sitting in my basement <laughs> studio, you're in your home, and somehow we have created, you know, you can be introverted, but not in a way, um, by sharing what you do and what you know in your own unique way. It's like, it's the best thing ever. Um, and you don't need a lot of resources to have, you know, that that option, mm -hmm. you know. So um, what so I want to hear some more tips. Do you have more tips? Like you said, get a tripod, you know, is there a program you use or do you just use like the editing software on Instagram? So I shoot everything on my iPhone and I edit everything in InShot. The app itself is really robust. Like this is where the techie in me comes out. You can trim videos. There's sounds that you can layer on. There's transitions you can have. You can slow it up, speed it up. Uh, it's just a really great app. I use it for everything. Um, when it comes to my video editing, there's other softwares like Templey is a good one that I use for my um, part time job. But InShot is the one I predominantly use because I can also do voiceovers, which is really nice. Yeah, I have InShot and I haven't been very good because, well, just because you can slow things now in Instagram and all that stuff, right? Yeah. But and the reason I like InShot is like, okay, you've edited this entire video and sometimes it can take a little while. That's for sure. 
but with InShot, you can save it with Instagram. I think there's a way where after you edit it, it'll download a file for you, but you're not going to get that crisp resolution. Quality. Yeah, that's true. Like um, my advertiser always wants like a nice version, of course, and you can't download with audio, right? Unless mm -hmm. the audio after, like you can download it with your voiceover, but you can't have the music audio included. Um, but yeah, that's a really good point. I should start definitely using it first. And, you know, everything's cumbersome at first. And then it's not so hard after a little while. It's yeah. Really once you wrap your head around it. And I found Gosh, that my great loving sister can do it. So can you. It's exactly. And she should make shirts that says it's all gravy. It's all gravy. I should tell her. <laughs> oh. oh, I remember when we were playing on, because I've never, I've been with my partner since uh, 2006, I think. So I never, we never got to do, uh, the only thing that was like online dating was I think it was called like high five or something. It was right before Facebook. And so I think it was called that, which is nice. a great name. High five. <laughs> it was like Facebook. It just never took off in the same way. And um, so she was single for a bit and we got to play on what's the one where you swipe the uh, Tinder? Tinder. Yeah. So Tinder. Yeah. We spend so many hours on Tinder <laughs> that she didn't use her real name. She didn't actually want to be on Tinder, really. Yeah. And um, the reason we were playing about my sister-in-law was from Toronto. We live in the Prairie Provinces of Canada. And so my sister-in-law came with Tinder, too, because she was also newly single. And we were like, oh, my gosh, like these people on the Toronto Tinder were like nice clothes, like really cultured <laughs> and i'm not saying anything bad about my community my community is amazing and they're so special and they support me and i support them and but there was a definite difference between toronto tinder and our tinder because like our tinder it was um mostly hunting so. yep and and trucks and or another dead animal or a fish or of course and so she didn't want to be on there and she just like sent gravy shot and turkey legs so, like every time she messaged her i was like what are you doing oh i love that type of trolling like it's just so like innocent it's like here's a turkey leg yeah she, she's like turkey leg them <laughs> Oh, so I've gotten so off topic, but yeah, I mean, when you don't get to Tinder, it's fun to tinger. I, I obviously, you know, I didn't get to play on. It's probably not as fun if you're an actual single person. Yes, I've heard horror stories about just like the quality of like, like all my straight friends are just like, yeah, the men suck in this city. I'm like, I'm glad I met my husband in college. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like way safer like i think it just get weird i mean well i could yeah yeah um, yeah it's a it's tough all that stuff is tough anyway yeah i've gotten really off topic it's all good it's all gravy uh, in shot okay i swear after this episode i will like start there first maybe maybe on monday or something <laughs> It is. I'm so efficient now that and time for me is like with three kids is just like few and far between. So, um, yeah, any way I can like cut a corner mostly and or be efficient is is great. Um, what are some other like efficiency tips and or things you use? Like because you said you're techie. Yeah. So like. I like to joke that I have undiagnosed ADHD just because like I'll be cleaning the house and I'll be like, oh, I should start a painting right now. And my husband will come home and he'll be like, why is half the kitchen clean and the other half is? And I'm like, I don't know, but look at this painting. Um, but like one thing that's really helped me is like finding a genre of music that really gets me going. And for a lot of people with like my brain mechanism, they recommend like lo-fi. It's just like, it's like hip hop, but it's chill and there's no lyrics. So you don't get 
distracted by a storyline that's one tip i have personally for myself like set the mood in your studio space because where you're creating not only does it have to have like everything that you need within easy reach you have to have like a comfortable chair your surfaces have to be accommodating to what you actually want to create you need to be aware of like how much of a mess am i going to make or even like when it comes to finishing paintings like it took me years to do this when it comes to varnishing, I bought a pop-up tent that I now take outside so bugs don't like kamikaze into them and die in the varnish <laughs> as it's drying. And it's just like, I have like a, a lot of practical tips that I wish I thought of in the beginning because it would have saved a lot of like heartache having to use an X-Acto knife to like scrape bugs out. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah, and I think mentorship and coaching and, and stuff like that helps when when people aren't doing a formal education in in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, I just reopened up my, when we talked about time, I shut it down for a long time because it is time consuming, but one-on-one -on -one mentorship, just because it's so special, but mm -hmm. anyone can like find, you know, it has to be the right coach and mentor for you. But when it comes to, um your studio practice and using the right materials from the get-go it's such it's such so important uh because you don't need to spend all the money on making mistakes you don't like those are unnecessary and if you mentorship is not expensive if you think about the material and the time you're saving um when it comes to and of course i actually answer a lot of questions on instagram um, I don't know how uh, how you do that, but um, I always answer messages. Like if someone's like, how did you do that? I always answer back and I think it's so important, but at, like, and reach out to people and figure it out. So you're, you're not, it is frustrating. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, have, like I work with resin and epoxy and you're doing like the final, yeah, it's like, if you get a, it's a nightmare because if you get a bug on there, it's either spend like hours polishing it out and re, which, and buffering, which in my opinion, just throw another coat on. Yeah. Yeah. But that's like a, like, that's like a $150 decision right there. Like a mosquito landed or a fly or even a fruit fly landed on my giant black triangle that it's really obvious that there's a fruit fly on there. And now I have to, re-epoxy and fire it out and wait for it to dry and hope another fruit fly doesn't just get in there like it's it's a, such a valuable tool to know the materials you're working with mm -hmm. um, and or what results are you looking for and what do you need to use to get that like what are you into like i'm working with someone right now who's in a program um and she isn't participating because it's not the style that she wants to work in mm -hmm. and so she's enrolled herself in all this time and all this energy into something and it's not suiting so then seeking someone you know else like you you should know what you're you're getting into you should set yourself up for success is what i'm trying to in the best way you can yeah right? absolutely and i was very lucky um well <laughs> i had one art professor who was like do not paint any of your paintings with Walmart painting paints because I can tell the difference between quality paint and cheap paint. I was like, damn, he's right. So like now, like whenever I buy paint, it's always expensive stuff. Just yeah. because now I know I can tell the difference and it's like, it's making sure that I'm not wasting my time going over layer after layer just because I decided to be cheap, which I understand like, people need to get to that progression. Like you're a beginner and then you slowly get to advance. And it's fine to use those lesser quality products in the beginning, but it's like, if you want something to last that you're gonna invest all this time into, you also have to invest in your materials. Or even a friend that I um, met when I was at a collaborative, I knew nothing about hanging my paintings. I knew nothing about varnishing my paintings. She taught me and told me where to go and how to do it. She was the person that told me to buy a power drill. And she told me like, you know, if you want your paintings to 
last forever you either need to pick between matte or glossy varnish it was like oh you actually have to varnish something i didn't know that i thought oh i'm done with the painting here it is on the wall and And you went to art school but that's the thing about like some art schools it's just like not everything was taught like i have a painting downstairs in my home that I painted back in like 2008 and I'm pretty sure there's no varnish on it because he never touched on it. And I think it's just from like a chemical standpoint, like they didn't want the art building to smell like varnish because you will kill your brain cells inhaling that shit. And I have a respirator mask now. That's another thing. Yeah. Safety, yourself. Safety, safety, safety. Well, yeah. there is varnish that isn't so like, I have a ventilator, but like the Liquitex varnishes for like acrylics aren't like they don't smell, which is amazing. I've used some that smell and it is awful. Serena behind me had to be varnished and it was just like awful, sticky, smelly. It depends, you know, and again, a a person who works in the industry will have, well, for me, I feel like after 16 years, I feel like I've made every fucking mistake. So I can tell you definitely not what to do and what to, what you can do. Yeah. And um, it's so great. But yeah, the materials thing, especially because art materials are very, very pricey. And you're right. You know what? Even if we're kind of starting out, I would even, I would even go the stretch if you can to get the yeah. good stuff. Absolutely it's worth it. And, and, and I mean, you can try, but compare them like just buy one bottle of each and you'll see. And for you specifically, yeah. Going over a color, like once, maybe three times. Uh, like, yeah. Like yeah. it only makes sense if it's a low opacity. I'm like, okay, this is fine. I made this really pale yellow green. I'll go over it a few times, but it's like, if it's a dark color, I'm just like, Mm-mm, fuck that noise. Not doing it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, because you've, you've used your material for years and years and years. Um, that's like anything, like when I'm painting large murals, I always get like the, um, the paint with everything, the primer, the everything. Cause I, the woman, when I was buying paint, she's like, there's not a difference really just get the other stuff. I was like, Oh, okay. And it was, it was like a ready, like a poppy orange red. And mm-hmm. I ended up seven coats of it. I was like, never again. I yeah. will never do this again. Like ever. It was a 25 foot interior mural. I was just like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Cause like our time is worth money too. That's another investment you have to think about for yourself. And like the longer you're in your studio practice, you do become more efficient. You know what to do and you'll take advice, but you don't always have to implement it. You can be like, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'll just get the dollar <laughs> one, not the thirty-five one. Not much of a really big difference. We think about seven coats and two. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Invest in the materials and bet because time, time, and I say this all the time, is our most precious commodity. I even wrote a book about it. <laughs> I did. I wrote an eighty thousand basically the message is time is our most precious commodity so i'm excited i today i'm doing like i'm hoping this final it's supposed to be the final uh formatting edit but i'm thinking i'm like i really want to be sure so this is definitely like the second last formatting edit i'm so excited but everything i talk about in the podcast and in life that was fun writing a book about it it was like, yeah, kind of like a diary of what's happened. Yeah. Um, and that's just another form of creativity and documenting what we do. Exactly. Do you think as a creative, you're more like you're multifaceted and everything kind of like feeds to the other thing? Oh, absolutely. Because like, you know, some days like, to be honest, like when my mental health isn't the best, sometimes it's really hard to be up here. And like, I have to get back into the ritual of like, okay, I'm a sad little human being right now. What rituals do I need to do? And sometimes just like cooking like a really beautiful meal and nourishing myself is like a creative practice that just bleeds into my 
daily ritual life, just like being able to create something that not only looks beautiful, but nourishes me, or even like um, decorating our home. Like I, I feel like I'm a fun, whimsical person. So like when it comes to like buying decor for our home, I'm like, what's the weirdest shit I can find? And I find it. Like yesterday, I bought a duck basket that I'm going to take pictures with my cat in. And I'm just like, I can't wait to this basket. <laughs> and it's vintage. And I'm like, I shared it with my friend. And she's like, oh, that's interesting. I'm like, yeah, it's really fucking cool. <laughs> but it's just like, I try to look at everyday life. Like when I can't paint, I'm like, how can I be creative today? What's going to tickle my soul today? Cause I just, I need that daily magic and I try not to force it in here. Like I let it intuitively flow out of me when I'm in my studio space, but in everyday life, it's just like, it goes back to even like manners, like the ritual of being kind and polite and connecting with people that bleeds into like my creative practice and my real life too. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> a balance in the best way is when something is like not feeling like you're just pushing it too hard go do something else for a second that's what i love about parenthood because i'm forced <laughs> to do all the other stuff because i would just like i would just bleed it all out in here like i would just be here all the time because i definitely like stubbornly love it so much that i would love it to death and so having kids like forces me outside of course i mean but like then i'm i'm enjoying it like i went yes. for an hour-long walk yesterday in the fall leaves like in the forest with my son and like that fed that fed me and now i'm ready in a good way to come back and express <laughs> myself and give myself and in a different way so you're totally right like this just take a fucking break. <laughs> like, exactly. just like break and don't feel bad about it. Don't feel guilty. This is life. Like we can't be 1000% doing this, this, and this, and it doesn't always work out. Just take a break, enjoy your break and embrace the beauty in it. I can't wait for Thanksgiving tomorrow and pie and, and hanging out outside. Like, I, I won't feel bad about it at all. Zero. And normally I kind of would. I'd be like, I have so much to do. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Yeah. And I think a lot of people think that as creatives, we're always creating. But it's like, no, we're also human beings that need to live. We need to experience what this reality offers us. And you find inspiration like going for a walk your mind just recalibrates while you're looking at the trees and you're decompressing and it's like, oh, this is what it's all about. And now you're in a better headspace to get back into the studio if you have the time. Exactly. Oh, so this comes back to one of my favorite quotes and it's Gertrude Stein. And she says, the subject matter of art is life. Life as it actually is, but the function of art is to make life better. Yes. Yes. I felt that like in my heart for a second. Because it's so true. Because it's like th there was that trend on TikTok about talking about um how homes are slowly turning into these beige gray spaces. And it's like, oh, there's so much more than just those two colors. Like just feel the expression of joy of like the kaleidoscope of living. You know what I mean? I think that's what your paintings are. Yes. They're like a kaleidoscope <laughs> of living. Yeah. And yeah. like it all goes back to the inspiration of the series. Like I joke that I'm a hypochondriac, but it's true, whatever. Um, <laughs> but it's just like I find just like the act of living in itself and creating these paintings that represent like the mechanics of my internal structures. It's just it tickles my brain because I'm like, well, they don't actually look like that, but it's fun to like pretend like this is what it looks like inside of an artist. It's like an acid trip without the acid. Yeah. Sorry. Right. <laughs> it is. No, it's like in the best way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Andy, it was super nice to meet you. I'm so glad that see, and we connected on social media. I, I always just like sit and watch your videos. <laughs> 
I love it. I hope yeah. you're enjoying them. Yeah, your nails are always so nice, which I don't know how you do that because like mine are always filled with like black paint and like they never look good. So like they never actually go the step to like get something on them because it would be destroyed. The trick is, so I used to get gels and like this all started when I started my part-time job because I did hand modeling for it. So my hands had to look good. And oh, there you go. Hand model. Yes. So <laughs> now I get SNS, which this will last four weeks. And whenever I get paint on them where the chemical structure of this essential varnish, I could just scrub the paint off and it comes off and yeah. that's it. And I always go with like dark colors just because it hides everything. Yeah. Good tip. Good nail tip. My friend runs like this nail addicts. She obviously is into nails, but um, so I should ask her about that. But she just took my portrait class and she wants to use um, what she learned in my portrait class and put it on nails. I want to see that. Yeah. So she's just kind of like figuring out like the technical way to do it. So tiny which like boggles my own mind oh yes <laughs> ah, but so i can't wait i will once she does it her name is candace i will share it with you um and she has had great success too just like on social media and um so like it's out there it's possible for you and i love all the things you shared with us because um and I want to talk about just sorry one more thing we were signing off but we're not jealousy so sometimes when especially as creatives you're like oh my gosh you got a show no way I'm super jealous but jealousy is not a bad word jealousy if you're feeling jealousy for Angie about and you're an artist and you create paintings and you want to sell them from social media that's really a good thing because Angie is proof that you can do it so jealousy is not a bad word at all it's yeah. great because that means somehow you can figure it out too. It's yeah, possible. It's, it's fuel for the fire. It's like, if you really want something that fucking bad, you're going to find a way to get it. Yeah. And like, you have to have a tenacity. You can still be like, if you're like a meek person, you can still be meek, but also tenacious. Like get your bag, like fucking do it. Cause you can do it if you put in the effort, but sorry. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Leo sun, Aries rising. <laughs> <laughs> you can fucking do it. That's the best. That's what I'll call it. You can fucking do it, says Anne. Yeah. Yes. Just fucking do it because you have this one life. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. We'll keep in touch and um, I'll chat with you more and let you know when this is out. Where can everyone find you? You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Ello, and everything's Angie the Rose. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Have a great weekend, friend. You too. Bye. Bye.